Hi, my name is Carrie McBroom. I am a lawyer working with the Human Rights Law Network in New Delhi, and I'm working on this HPV uh, public interest litigation that we filed. Um, the public interest litigation has already had some major impacts, even though it's still pending in the court and probably will be for some time. I think the first major impact and something that's really exciting is that the court, um, partly because the government has also done this, but partly because of our petition, has really taken private organizations, both public health NGOs, meaning PATH from the United States, and then also these pharmaceutical companies, and made them accountable. And while it hasn't passed any sort of powerful order against any of these private organizations yet, it still forced them to reply in the court. And they're taking it seriously. PATH has filed several thousand pages of, um, of pleadings in the case, and they're really taking it seriously, and it's something that they're concerned about. And it's definitely groundbreaking in that sense, because NGOs, private organizations, are not often respondents in public interest litigation. And um, so that's been a very amazing and groundbreaking thing. That's linked very closely to this report that the government came out with on this case, uh, which was a 72nd Parliamentary Standing Committee report, which um, said that PATH was responsible for child abuse cases. And what this case is actually, or child rights violations, and what this case has actually done is help to publicize and give weight to that government report. A lot of time, the Parliament of India or different subcommittees in the government will come out with a report and it'll just kind of sit there. Um, but because of this case, and because of the publicity that the case has garnered, and because of the case forcing both the government and these private entities to reckon with what they've done, it's actually given a lot more weight to that Parliamentary Standing Committee report, and hopefully we'll see some action as a result of that. The third thing that's really important about this case is that it actually holds the government accountable for rights violations, which um, is kind of the point of our work and kind of the point of doing human rights law, of course, but in India, it's not something that actually happens in reality very often. So seeing the court force the Union of India, force the different regulatory bodies of India, and force the state governments to reply is something that's really uh, exciting, not only because when the states and the government and the different government bodies file their replies, we get an excellent outline of what happened and what their side of the story is, and access to documents that we didn't have before, but also because it does force them to take some action. It forces them to maybe go to the field and examine what happened. It forces them to talk to doctors, nurses, and people down the line to see what happens. And it lets them know that somebody is watching them, and that somebody cares, and that somebody is filing things in court, and is not going to stop until they've reckoned with the mass rights violations of these adolescent girls. And I think the fourth and final impact of the case, for now, is that it has given a lot of publicity to the issue. With the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights and other organizations that have joined in this fight, both in terms of legal analysis, in terms of publicizing it, in terms of discussing the issue with potential partners, it's really brought this to an international scale where people are concerned about this. And what that's going to do is let the pharmaceutical companies based in their home countries know that they're also being watched. And it's going to create accountability on a much wider scale. And I think that these impacts will multiply and will become much stronger as the case progresses. And as we move towards a final argument and final order, we'll also see more tangible uh, reliefs and impacts for the girls on the ground themselves, including hopefully better health care, some sort of compensation, and if nothing else, a much more thorough investigation into what has happened to these girls, and, um, and of course, finally getting them justice for the grave human rights violations that they have suffered.